Welcome to the channel, I'm Dan Lee and in this series of videos I'm building a quarter scale version of a boat design called Temptress. At quarter scale I can show you the entire process for how you would build this boat if you were doing a full size one. Or if you want to do a miniature one um, for RC version or something like that, it's a pretty cool project as well. So in the previous video we were looking at starting to install the two main stringers that run through the centre of the boat. We looked at some of the uh, process behind setting everything up to receive those stringers and then starting to notch them to take one of these solid wood frames. So in this video we're going to continue on from that and we're going to look at some of the other frames and how the process differs slightly with installing those and um, yeah that's pretty much it let's get going. So I've now got my additional material glued up onto the stringers so you can see we've got an extra put an extra two laminations on those in the end thick one and a slightly thinner one as well. So we're now up above the height of the frames, which is what we want. Um, extra material here isn't going to be um, any harm at all, but uh, too little is not what we want. So we're all good for that at the moment. Um, so in the previous video, we, we put this frame in. So we notched the stringer for this frame so that we could drop it in. And we're going to look at a few different ones now. So um, as I mentioned, this is quite an easy frame because it's open topped, which means I can drop this onto the strong back. We've got a load of frames that are closed top, so they've got a deck beam around the top of them like this, and that's gonna make things a little bit more tricky. And what we're gonna to have to do is a process of loading all of those frames onto the system. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna take the stringers back out of the boat, and as we put them back in, what we're gonna do is load all of these um, complete ring frames onto the stringers and we'll get them all in place and then I think we'll actually do the notches on the boat here. I've now got the uh, forward end of the stringers fixed into frame two, just put a little screw in the end of that for now and that's actually helped to uh, to firm things up a little bit more and um, as we get some more frames notched and screwed into place that will make things even firmer still so I think actually cutting these notches on the boat isn't going to be a problem even for my uh, little miniature scale one. One other thing we need to do to the stringers is to put the ply on the outside of these two sections. So the big sections aft on the stringers in the region of the engine bed, so um, from frame nine back after the transom, those are sandwiched with a piece of plywood either side, which you can just about see there. And that's a piece of 12 mil ply either side of the lamination. So, uh, because we're going to be cutting the notches through that, we really want that in place at this stage, I think. So I'm also going to uh, get that done on these two. So uh, let's whip them out of the boat. Okay, so I've got the uh, outer sections glued up on those stringers and then I've reprojected the lines all the way around them. In hindsight, I probably should have done that earlier on in the process and put those um, sandwich sections on the stringers first of all before we marked all the lines around. Um, but in all honesty, this boat is as much a, a learning process for me as anybody. I'm, I know I'm kind of teaching the process, but a lot of this stuff I'm actually teaching myself five minutes before I show you it on camera. 
it's very much a trial and error thing for me to learn. So um, that's part of the fun of it. Um, we're, we're getting things worked out and uh, making mistakes along the way. It happens. Mistakes or improvements, I like to think of them as improvements, lessons along the way. So, um, on that vein, there's another little thing that uh, somebody mentioned in the comments last week um, on the other video, and I thought, that's actually a really great idea, it's ridiculously simple and um, it really makes sense. And that was to do with when we were marking the notch heights for the um, solid wood components of the frames onto the stringers. And somebody, uh, Max, I think it was in the comments said, why don't you just mark the outline of the solid wood frame on the bulkhead and then when you put the stringer in, you can just copy that line across to the, uh, to the stringer. Great idea, thank you very much for that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna uh, put the solid frames back, pair them back up with the bulkheads. I'm gonna mark those lines and then we're gonna use those to mark our notch heights. That makes sense. Let's do that. So frame seven then. And go back in, we're just gonna line that up with the screw holes on the leg that are gonna pin that back at the correct height. Put some little clamps on there, just hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna mark the underside of that. Drop the stringer back in. Here we go, we've got a little tick mark from the bottom of the frame. And you can see it's angle on either side of the frame. So we now just got to transpose that line through to the stringer and that gives the height of the notch. That's a better way to do it, isn't it? Very nice, we're all learning here. Okay, so all of those notch heights are marked up now on the bulkheads. That's gonna make it so much easier for us to mark those and cut them when it comes to setting our heights once we've got the stringers back in. So we're ready to thread the stringers into the boat now. And you can see that I've just loosely positioned all of these frames. And what we're gonna to need to do is as we put the stringers in, we're gonna to need to load any frame that is a complete ring frame, such as this one with a deck beam onto the stringers. And that also includes some of the frames aft such as frame 11, which although whilst it's technically not a ring frame, it kind of is because it's got this cross member on here and we're gonna struggle. We'd have to take that off to then get it over the stringers so it makes sense just to thread that one as well. So let's, um, let's get them put into place. Okay, so that is all of the frames threaded on. You can see it's gonna be otherwise impossible to get frames like this in and out of place. But um, we've got them in there now and what we're able to do is work on this notch in place and just shift this frame out the way and just hang it on there. So um, that should work a treat. These ones can still obviously come back out, same as frame eight did, because they're open bottomed, open topped. And then, yeah, these are our ones, these are our frames that are also open topped, but because of this cross member, it's probably a good idea to thread those on. So, there we go. Let's, um, let's start to take a look at uh, doing some of the other notches. Okay, so let's start up in the bow with frame three. So we've got a little line here, which we've marked onto a bulkhead, so we can just transpose that across onto the stringer. And that gives us where we want to notch out. Now we're on a really steep angle 
up here with frame three, so we're taking quite a bit out of that stringer, certainly on the outside anyway. That's what we want to lose. And then we'll go to the inside face. Okay, let's cut that portion out. Okay, so that works really nicely. You can see that I've dropped that frame down to the same height so that we're just, you can see I've got a slightly longer screw there. So we're just falling back into line where the little hole that's in the frame notches back into the screw. I'm not actually able to screw that because um, we're on a really tight angle here. So I think I'm gonna have to get myself a little stubby screwdriver just so that I can put these back together within the boat or a flexi drive or something maybe to get in there. But um, we're at the correct height anyway, so that's good. You can see the angle of our notch on the inside of that frame, and then on the outside, really nice. So, that's frame three. Let's take a look at uh, another one that's slightly different. So frame nine, of course, is our angled frame and things are always a little bit different with this one. So we've got our little tick mark there for the height of, um, where we want to be. Now that angle actually wants to be projected back at 90 degrees to the face of this bulkhead. So we're not going to come across just horizontal as we are with, um, with the rest of these because that frame is also on an angle in that direction. So what I'm going to do is just get a little square and I'm going to mark that back upwards. That's an exaggerated example, but it will come back upwards um, at 90 degrees to the face of that bulkhead. Another tool I'm gonna to need to get for myself is a little square, but uh, I'm gonna actually use the end of the ruler for this one because all of my squares are a little bit too big to get in this space. So we're just gonna tick that around the corner to there. And then we wanna come back away from that at 90 degrees to the face. And that gives us our scrap that we will cut out so we're gonna cut this out here and across the top. Do the same process on the other side and then we'll get cutting. Okay, so frame number nine is in and placed. You can see what that looks like. So that's a couple of different ones. We've got uh, frame three, which is on quite a steep angle with uh, quite a deep notch through the stringer there. We've got frame eight, which is a pretty standard open topped frame. And then we've got frame nine, which is the slightly more complex um, angled one. So the notch is obviously on an angle for that, but it didn't actually pose too much of a problem. So um, the only slight difference we're gonna have here is with these aft frames. Frame 11, 
where that isn't actually on a bulkhead so we've got to uh, establish its height in a slightly different way so let's take a look at how we do that one okay so to set the height of frame 11 what we need to do is to use the laser level and our waterline one mark on the legs so that is going to be our reference for how high we are and how far we need to come down with these notches now i've got the stringers uh, just braced up with a couple of extra legs on the transom just to keep things firm and stop them dropping off because there's not a great deal of support back here um, at the moment until we get some of this dialed in a bit further so i've got those two squared up which means that we know that the frame isn't going to be tipping in this direction too much what we can do now if we take a look at the strong back leg we can see our height difference so if we measure what that is that is 24 millimeters so now we can measure the cutouts for this notch in the same way that we did them on frame 8 originally so we'll measure from these frame faces down So there we go, process for frame 11. I'm stood in the laser so you can't see it, but uh, we're now dropped down onto the height of that. And that has given us guidance for our notches. So there we go, we're slowly getting there. We're getting a few different frames notched in and um, all the rest of the frames that are here, pretty much the same as what we've seen already. So. Um, frame three is going to be very similar to frame two, same sort of process there. And then we've got some of these open topped frames here that are the same as frame eight. And then a few frames aft, which are done in the same way as 11. And uh, that shows the bulk of the process. So I'm going to leave it at that for that video. We've taken a look at all the different frames and all the different variations of how we notch those into the stringers. So I'm going to carry on working on the rest of those and get all the other frames notched into place. And then in the next video, what I think we'll do is we'll take a look at the chines and we'll start to get those installed on the boat and um, another big element and something a little bit different as well. So that'll be interesting to see. As always, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.